Hello again, everyone. I'm Dr. George Simon, and welcome to another edition of the New Character Matters program. The program where we talk about what I consider to be the defining issue of our time, the character crisis that we have faced for several decades now, and that affects every single aspect of our lives. Perhaps most importantly, our more important relationships our intimate relationships, but every aspect of our lives is affected by the character crisis. In fact, it would be very difficult not to trace all of our social problems, political conflicts, and a host of related issues. It would be hard not to trace them all to character. As I mentioned in all my writings, Character is that aspect of our personality that reflects our moral groundedness, the level of internalization that we have of values crucial to functioning as a decent human being. And today I want to spend some time talking about type of narcissism frequently called malignant narcissism, what it is and what it isn't. There's a lot of information out there these days about narcissism, and a lot of it's good information, but unfortunately, there's a lot of misinformation too, and a lot of inaccurate information about narcissism. So let me first reiterate, as I have done many times, that character disturbance in general, including narcissism, is a spectrum phenomenon. By that, I mean these things vary as to type and degree. There are certain character disturbances, certain character types that are not quite as pathological and not quite as potentially harmful in a relationship. And that's true of narcissism. Back when I was writing my book, Character Disturbance, and was describing the two major types of narcissism, we didn't have a lot of empirical research to support the contentions that I was making. We have that evidence now and in abundance. Some individuals with some narcissistic traits are relatively benign individuals. Their hubris and some of the other characteristics they possess are not that inherently toxic to a relationship, and they certainly aren't dangerous traits to have. But that's not the case when it comes to malignant narcissism. By definition, malignant conditions are conditions that are expected to worsen and that inherently carry greater risk, inherently pose danger. And so it is with malignant narcissism. And the key aspect that makes a person's narcissism malignant is the relative incapacity for empathy, for genuine care or concern about another human being's welfare. Malignant narcissists are so self-absorbed and so committed only to their own self-aggrandizement, profit, success, however they define it, they are so committed to themselves and what they can get for themselves, that no one and nothing else matters, period. They may say that it does, but it doesn't. And in the end, whenever you're dealing with a malignant narcissist, you are dealing by definition with danger because it's not just that the malignant narcissist doesn't care. They can't care. It's not in their makeup. There's a lot of debate about whether that incapacity is simply built in genetically. And that debate has its roots in some empirical studies that show that the brains certain malignant narcissists operate very, very differently than normal brains. But that evidence alone is not enough 
to suggest that those brains are wired differently from birth. There's a lot of misinformation about that too. As a matter of fact, it's very disheartening to see how much, not only misinformation, but truly inaccurate information there is out there about character disturbances of all types and uh, narcissism in particular, which is why I do these podcasts and videos and why I publish my articles on my blog at drgeorgesimon.com. Also why I've written my books. It's important also to say that while some malignant narcissists are so crude and so unabashed in their displays of their own grandiosity and in their lack of care and concern for others and in their ready willingness to mock and belittle uh, anyone else who doesn't testify uh, to their greatness, basically, that they are kind of repulsive in many ways to many people. But not all malignant narcissists are so revolting in their manner. As a matter of fact, some can be, at least on the surface, quite charming and quite engaging if they have honed those skills. Sadly, in relationships, most folks don't realize how incapable of truly caring malignant narcissists are until a lot of damage has already been done until there's been a lot of heartache. And that's one of the reasons why I've written so much on these topics and hope you'll avail yourself of all of my books readily available on Amazon. And why I hope you'll tune in again next time on the new Character Matters program. Until then, I'm Dr. George Simon. Thanks for tuning in. Take care.